Hello and welcome to Radio Primavera Sound. It is a chilly Friday in sunny Benidorm uh, at Primavera, Weekend, Primavera Weekenda and we are joined by Stuart Braithwaite from Glasgow Rock Titans, Mogwai. Stuart, Hi, Hiya, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Are you a Titan? I, I, I feel, I like to feel I am, yeah. I think that counts. <laughs> First question for you. I know you've only just arrived, but you've played at a lot of holiday camps. You've played a lot of all tomorrow's parties. Yeah. How does the Magic Robin Hood camp compare? It's nicer. I think it's nicer than most of the ones we've been to. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we've been demanding a medieval theme for places we play for a long time. So it's finally good to see our demands come to fruition. You know, there's jacuzzis as well. Is there? Nice. Yeah. I told you you should have stayed here. It's bad. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I would like to get in a jacuzzi with a, I don't know, knight <laughs> or, 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 you know, some kind of medieval maiden or something. It's, it's pretty good. Well, someone was telling me that one of the one of the arenas, I'm not sure if it's the one you're playing, is occasionally used for jousting tournaments, which is going beyond the Call of Duty. I Again, think. something we've been asking for for a long time, and it's just good to yeah, it's good to finally get there. No, I'm, I'm, I, I, I like random novelty things. It's good. Um, I don't want to depress you this early in the morning, <laughs> but I want, I want to ask, what is it like being a touring British rock band in times of Brexit and COVID? Uh, worse than it used to be, <laughs> yeah. I never thought I would need to get a Spanish visa. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's a bit crapper. <laughs> um, and, but you know what? For us, it's a hassle. I think that the bigger thing is for bands that maybe don't have, aren't getting paid as much that they can afford to get the visas and all that. So, I mean, a hassle is one thing, but actually stopping people, bringing their music to different countries is a more serious thing. And that is definitely happening. I saw a bunch of bands dropping their Spanish dates and I, I think it's just a really, real shame. Yeah, I think they've seen Squid are not playing and, you know, bands who might be playing to sort of 500 people and they just kind of can't. Yeah, because it'll be hard to do. I mean, all that stuff's expensive and quite often when you're, just put out your first records or whatever, you're not even making money, you're just breaking even. So once a, someone adds on a, a bunch of other costs, it stops you going places. So yeah, I, I, I really hope that something's worked out about that. But yeah, I, I just, it just seems so silly that people, people voted to make their lives worse. <laughs> it just seems crazy. I want to ask as well, I mean, an, an, another COVID thing. You recently called Eric Clapton a complete joker for his... Uh, anti-vaccine stance yeah. he's been I, saying all kinds of all kinds of things yeah obviously there's been ian brown i think is anti why do you think like musicians are being anti-vax or is it just that you know there's a section of society that's like that and we see more musicians or i think, think? I, I i think there's a certain type of musician who has has maybe been successful for quite a long time and is just not used to anything that is a hassle to, to them and they're probably well definitely wealthy enough that someone's probably bringing them their groceries and they're not in the real world you know and I don't know I just I think it's a it's a next level of privilege where you can decide that you don't believe in medicine you know it, it, it just it seems so I don't know brattish and um yeah I was I, my mum my mum was a doctor. I tend to believe that doctors and scientists are trying to help us. And, yeah. I'll, I'll take your mum over Eric Clapton every time, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, it would be a good decision. <laughs> don't know what a guitar playing's like, but, yeah, she definitely understands the world of science. Recording your most recent album, As the Love Continues, was disrupted quite a bit by COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and you had Dave Fridman producing by Zoom. How yeah. on earth... Did that work? It worked fine, actually. Like, um, it wasn't just Zoom. I actually found out there was a lot more to it. He was he had like a digital audio link, and he could hear everything we were doing. So it it, it was like he was there. Um, he was totally involved. But yeah, a bit weird. Um, but I was just glad he was still involved. I kind of thought he would he would just have um, been checking that we were playing well or something but he was actually properly like talking to us where the mics were how 
how each take was, like properly involved. So yeah, it all went really well. So you would literally have a computer open with, with him there on Zoom and he could say things? Yep. Wow. Yep. I mean, presumably, hopefully, ever with the way the world is, you won't need to do that for the, for the next album. I hope not. But I mean, <laughs> is, it, is it something, I mean, could you do it again if you had to? If like, Yeah, we could do. Yeah, it, it worked fine. And I'm sure, I mean, Dave hates traveling, so... Um, that'll probably, that level of technology will probably make him be involved in records that he might not otherwise be able to. So yeah, it has been an eye-opener for all kind of sides of society, the things that you maybe don't need to travel to do. You can, I know a lot of people are still not going into offices and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely going to change, change things for a lot of people. And as a band writing the album, you did it apart as well, right? Yeah, but we're kind of used to that though, because Barry wasn't living in Scotland for a long time, so we were we were pretty used to that. Um, so yeah, we're, that wasn't a big change for us. But uh, yeah, record, recording with Dave being in America was the big change. And I mean, the album is different, I would say, in like a number of a number of ways. It kind of does different things from your 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 other albums. Like, to what extent would you put that down to circumstances, and how much of it was just? You know, you wanted to, to do different things. Like, you always want to do different yeah, things. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was the thing Dave actually said to us. He said on every song, we did to do something we would never normally do. And some of those things didn't work out. But we definitely had that in mind to try something different. And yeah, also that last year, it was, it was all we did. Like, no one could do anything. No one went anywhere. No one had any plans. <laughs> like, same for everyone almost on the planet. But yeah, so... It really was the main focus of what we what we were doing last year. So I think that that played a part in kind of making the record what it was as well. So what what was the driving force behind um, as the love continues? Do you, do, before you do an album, do you get together and you like right? This one is going to be different. This one's going to be I don't know, more electronic, or does it just kind of evolve? It just falls the way it is. Depends what what we what what instruments we write the songs on and. I think the only kind of thing we've thought about in the past was whether we could play the songs live because some of our old records we'd go on tour and we could only play like one or two of the songs and it felt a bit weird. So we kind of kept kept, kept that in mind a little bit over the over the last few, but now we're just trying to do 10, 11 good songs and see what happens. I, I find that really interesting because you're, you're a band that changes a lot what you, you do with every album and, and you progress. Um, and you know that's something generally people like like bands to do. We can like them to stay the same in a way and progress in another way. Do you, but you you don't you don't think about it. What, how how do you see the idea of progression in your music? Is it just something that arises because you change as people? I think subconsciously we don't want to do things the exact same. You know, like especially like we've been going a long time and. Um, your people are giving, putting a lot of faith in you, staying with the band, still listening to your music after 10, 20 years or whatever. So you definitely want there to be a reason for them to still want to listen to your music. So even though we're not sitting going, oh, let's change a little bit, in the back of your mind, you're like, well, we need to change. We need to, we need to be doing something different because we need to, it needs to be exciting for us and it needs to be... There needs to be a reason for people to still want to hear what you're doing rather than just turn up and hear the songs from 20 years ago or whatever. And the album was a UK uh, number one hit. Um, you, you've never been a band that's in search of mainstream recognition. So how did you feel about having a number one? I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was also a surprise because, yeah, it's never been our... our mission so it came as a big surprise and yeah it was it was it's fun it's fun for something to happen that you never expected to happen and um yeah people sent a champagne it was great <laughs> do you still pay do you still pay attention to the the charts the main charts like what's number one or? yeah i mean we, we've got we we run the record label too so like we've got other bands too so like i mean at the end of the day the charts are a list of what records people are buying so like you need people to buy your records otherwise you've got a problem so 
yeah, I, I, I have a look at it. Obviously, most of the music in the charts is, is stuff I'm not super interested in. Loads of my favorite records don't go anywhere near the charts. But yeah, for 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 us and for the label, yeah, it's it's, it's good to to get as many people to hear the music we're putting out as possible. And do people treat you slightly differently now? You've got like a number one. I don't know. Not massively differently, but yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's there's people more aware of the band than than, than used to be, and I'm sure, um, yeah. No, no, I, I think it's definitely had an effect, but I don't know if we're quite at the kind of Michael Jackson <laughs> stage of, I don't know. I don't think you want to be like Michael Jackson. No, we definitely but. <laughs> don't, but yeah, we can, we can still go to the shops without being mobbed. <laughs> um, for me, As The Love Continues has what I would call poppier elements, you know, um, electronic sounds, um, as, as, as we just heard. Um, is toying with pop music something that excites you as a musician? Um, I mean, I've always liked pop music. I think we've always had a little bit of that in our music. We've always had, even though the songs generally don't have words, there's usually something that's kind of like a chorus in them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think we'd ever go full on, I don't know who the, who the big pop star is, Taylor Swift or anything. It's not, it's probably not our kind of thing, but yeah, I like pop music and yeah, it's good to try and steal the good bits from it. <laughs> but would you ever like uh, do a side project or something like that, you know, with a, a sort of, I don't know, uh, an electro trio or something like that or? No, no. If, if we did a side project, it would probably be more like sun or something. It'd probably go the opposite way. It'd probably be kind of super noisy or super demonic or something. <laughs> I want to ask about lyric writing, if it's all right. Um, yeah. You, you've said in the past that, I, I believe, that writing lyrics is not something that interests you that much. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I definitely don't write lyrics unless I have a song to write lyrics for. Like, I, uh, proper... Uh, People who write a lot of lyrics write down all the time, all that kind of stuff. So no, it's not, it's not, I think I'm probably getting a bit better at it, but it's not something I do unless I have to. Are you a sort of last minute in the studio person? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But I would say Mogwai songs have good lyrics. Like, Thank you. Do you, I mean, when you look at the lyrics, like a few, uh -huh. a few, a few years down the line, maybe, mm -hmm. do you think, are you pleased with them? Yeah. No, I, 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 I definitely, I mean, I'm not Leonard Cohen, but I definitely think the, the lyrics I've written are as good as I can write, you know. It was actually kind of funny. I remember I really beat myself up trying to write the lyrics for a song on the album before this, Party in the Dark, and sat for days and days at, this, at the piano at Dave Fredman's studio, just writing that down things and scuffing about it. And then we got in a taxi, and I can't remember who it was, like some proper big pop record come on, and I was in the in my head of listening to the lyrics and and they were so bad and I was like, oh God, I've really put this so much effort into this and like you can get away with writing any old crap. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, 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 I, I'm pleased with how they've turned out. It's quite, it's quite liberating in a way, isn't it? If you hear like some, yeah. a really, really great song and yeah, the lyrics- Yeah, it's probably sold a million copies and it's like, I don't know, someone singing about their shoes or some crap, you know? So, yeah, it's funny. So you've been, together for 26 years. Um, how have you managed to, to, to keep together? I mean, some people have changed, but you know, the, the band's still together yeah. after 26 years. How have, you, how have you done it? I think we just have fun, you know? We kind of don't take things too seriously. We try and have a laugh and yeah, enjoy what we do, really. Yeah, I, th I think we know we're lucky that we're still able to make a living as rock musicians after all this time. So yeah, we should try and make the best of it and enjoy ourselves. I was thinking that Glasgow is a good place to do that because there's mm -hmm. like a very strong music scene, lots yeah. of really good bands from Glasgow, but no one seems to sort of, I don't know, get, get people seem to enjoy it, you know, yeah. no one sort of becomes like a massive pop star and, you know. Yeah, Glasgow's quite a grounding place. It's definitely, um, people don't, you ask about people, People treat us differently. You're probably kind of kidding a little bit, but even if something crazy happened, people will treat you the same in Glasgow. People are not kind of into airs and graces. 
I always think your music sounds a bit like Glasgow. I don't know Glasgow that well. I've been yeah. there quite a few times. But for me, there's something about the, 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 the heaviness and like the, the intensity, intensity of it, maybe. Do, mm-hmm. do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, it's hard to quantify these things, but I th- when I think of bands I really like, like Joy Division, I think of Manchester and like London, I think of the Sex Pistols or whatever. So yeah, I do think that we probably do kind of typify the city in a way. And what's the most important thing you have learned from being in a band? Not necessarily musically, but just in life. I don't know. Probably punctuality. <laughs> uh, before we started the band, I could never turn up on time for anything. But yeah, as soon as you kind of realise that if you turn up for a plane, you don't get to go on it or whatever, you kind of slightly manage to incorporate that <laughs> into the rest of your life. Yeah, you don't turn, don't turn up on time, don't get to play the gig, and that's yeah. it. There's no sort yeah. of, you know. Yeah, there's no, oh, but please, please can you pay us anyway, even though we didn't turn up. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> Do, do you enjoy looking back on what you've achieved? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, not, I'm not really into nostalgia, but certainly when kind of um, like, we, like it was twenty, we recorded the record twenty five years after our first rehearsal. It was almost to the week, and I remember kind of looking back over the time, and and yeah, it, it's nice to see how far you've got. You know, it's it's good, and I'm really proud of the music we've made and stuff so yeah yeah that's fun and looking back to that first rehearsal do you remember how you felt did you feel that you'd got something good yeah but I mean we were the teenagers so you don't really think too long term at that point but yeah I definitely thought it was a good racket yeah it's good fun do you ever think of like a, a Mogwai legacy of what you're you're leaving not really because that's a bit like you're dead but <laughs> That's not something I want to encourage. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I I know that there's quite a lot of other musicians have been influenced by the music we make. I mean, I think that's quite a good legacy and uh, made 10 records. It's it's a lot of music. So yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with it. Do you think of in terms of like goals, things you still definitely want to do? I mean, like you had a number one album, Tick. I mean, not really, because we 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 didn't really have many goals to start with. So everything's kind of like a good surprise really um i'm just happy if people still want to hear our music to be honest we've never done a number two album so that's the next goal <laughs> that, that's more tricky because you've got to persuade a number of people to buy it but if they're going too much you've got to jack up the price or something so. <laughs> I, I, I don't know i think that would be a pretty, pretty big achievement as well to be honest you've toured you've toured a lot uh-huh. um have you ever considered not touring just sort of Staying home for a long, long time and... Well, that happened last year. That was the experiment of not touring. And yeah, it was crap. I hated it. So, no. (laughs) I like touring. Sometimes you can kind of bite off more and you can chew and get a bit burnt out. But yeah, it's nice going to different places and playing music. How how do you keep happy when you're touring so much? Just get into a little routine. Go and find a... Somewhere nice to go for lunch, go and look at the record shops. Yeah. I mean, we've been going so long, we usually know people in most of the places we play. So hang out with some friends or whatever after the show. Yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot. Go and see some bands on a day off or, yeah, it's, I, I quite like it. I'm amazed you want to go and see bands on the day off. It's almost like you'd want to go and lie down in silence or something. It depends on the band. I wouldn't go and see any old thing, but if, if there's someone good playing, yeah, that's, that's what I like to go and do. Do you have time to see some bands today? or I'm sure we will. Yeah, I think Thurston Moore's playing before, so I'll definitely watch, watch his show, um, check out some of the bands I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have, a, have a, a wonder about well, look, Stuart, thank you so much for coming along um, today. It's been Cheers. an absolute thank pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Oh.